So great to see everyone in person on the screen. I've also been recording to Facebook Live, so if you guys can't hop on Zoom, it should be there. Okay, so sit up nice and tall, comfortable seat. And create as much length in your spine as you can so that you can get deeper breath, so the energy can move through your system better. Use the tool of your breath to help yourself become more centered. And from a more centered space as thoughts come, which they will, you can remain centered and let the thoughts continue to move on. An effective way of doing this is using the mantra saw as you inhale and nam as you exhale. You give your mind a bone so it can less easily grab onto the other things. Notice how sitting with your breath, you can come into an experience of yourself more easily than when you're running around town or off of your mat. And now we'll add a mudra. So mudra is a hand symbol. So it's using the positioning of the hand to elicit a certain response. So normally we do index and thumb together. This is gyan mudra. It's for wisdom. My favorite lately has been middle finger and thumb. This is for patience. Or you can do ring finger and thumb. This is for creating solar energy. Or pinky finger and thumb for creating better communication. All of you have been practicing for a while, and with practice, you can become better at picking up on subtle differences. So can you notice the subtle difference you feel with the different hand position? And then bring your hands in front of your heart, pressing the palms together, this is another mudra, another position that changes the feeling tone of the body. In a moment, we'll tune in with the Anusara invocation, which is a calling on the, this higher teacher that is truth, consciousness, and bliss, and that it's always available to us. Take a deep breath in. Squeeze and lengthen, and exhale. Two more times, and then we'll chant. Breathe in, and out. Last one. See if you can become more centered. And out. And tuning in. Oh. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Sajitananda Mortaye Nish Prapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase
When you're ready, keeping your eyes closed, bring your hands back to your legs or your lap, coming into the mudra of your choice. Notice any subtle shifts that you've made through using your organism, body, mind, breath, sound. And then let your eyes open. Now I wanted today to work on this idea of non-duality. So when yoga, when yoga kind of first came out from a philosophical point of view, they divided it. So they're like, there's spirit and there's matter. And one way I heard about this a long time ago that made sense was spirit is the mountain and matter is the lake, or matter is the lake. So we're matter, we're the lake, and God or spirit or whatever you want to call it is the mountain. And we will never become the mountain but if we use our skills of yoga, we can calm the waters of our lake so that we might be able to reflect the mountain better. And so from this um, non-dual point of view, or from this dual point of view, you renounce yourself from life and you become less engaged with the world. You try not to have relationships. You don't have sex. This is where people go and live in a cave by themselves because they're pulling themselves out of matter as much as they can so they'll have a better chance of reflecting the mountain. That viewpoint has changed in a lot of yoga to non-dual, which came out a little bit after, that says, yes, there's spirit and matter, but above that is this oneness. So this oneness is in matter and it's also in spirit. And we can use the matter to help connect to the spirit. So we don't have to renounce anything. But it's interesting how you can see this showing up, especially in like yoga about like you shouldn't be too in overly engaged in certain things or you shouldn't want money or you shouldn't want these things because that's not yogic. So it helps me to be like, oh, this is just this, this older way of thinking that's still influencing us where they, where like matter becomes the obstacle. And I think it's so empowering to realize that matter is an opportunity. So everything is matter that we didn't like, right, going to Trader Joe's and waiting out in a very hot line. That's like an experience of matter or like paying taxes or maybe having your AC unit break, which ha maybe happened recently. Like how do you, um, how can we interact with everything and have it be a form of yoga? Because yoga is yoking, uniting these two so we can have this deeper experience. And so that's what we're doing on our yoga mat. So in these older traditions of yoga, it was how crazy of a position can you get yourself into as a way of being like, I can even do this to my body and I can check out and not care, right? It's like I can walk or lay on a bed of nails and I can be so disconnected from my body. I can do those things. Well, in these non-dual teachings, it's how can I use my body? How can I treat my body with love? How can I use each pose as like a form of devotion to help me come into this space of matter? Does that make sense at all? It's a huge teaching, but it's a really great reorientation for the mind, I think. Okay, so let's take your hands behind your head. <clears throat> We're gonna be trying to use our matter of our body to align our spines when our spines aligned and the energy can flow better. It's easier to come into this feeling of our spirit. So make your hands resistance and push your head back into your hands. Your ears are about over your collarbones. And notice if when you do that, your ribs stick out. So pull the ribs in as you push your head back. And if your ribs don't stick out, like have your spine looks perfect, don't pull your ribs in. Yeah. And if your butt wraps under, push your butt back a little bit too. So there's this like little subtle adjustment that's going on. Turn your spine to the right. I'm gonna try not to slaughter my sides today. Head still pushes back, shoulders push back, ribs draw in, sit bones push back and then lengthen. Come back through center and then twist over to the right. Make these little minor refinements and lengthen. All right, come back through center. Plant your hands on the floor table, hands and knees. Fingertips and knuckle ridges push into the floor. As you inhale, arch your spine, look up, sit bones up. And as you exhale, push through your hands, draw your ribs in and round. I think through a few of these where we go back and forth in this duality of two arched and then two rounded in order for us to find a combination in harmony of the two. So finding a neutral spine now. Everyone's will, the, what we do to get into it will look a little bit different, but draw your shoulders into the shoulder sockets. Draw the back of your neck up towards the sky and pull your ribs in. 
All right, bring your hips back to your heels, child's pose. Using this posture to help release the things that grip you too, too strongly. Maybe you have some kind of thought going on that has a lot of power on it. You try to use this pose to help you soften that grip. Inhale, come back up to table. We're going to do threaded needles. So the right hand will come between the left hand and the left knee. I like to come up onto the right fingertips. To get more opening in the shoulder, you can engage the right arm, make a fist with it, and then turn your thumb towards the front of the room. Uh, fist, yours is kind of obvious one. Use your left hand and pull the left shoulder back or the hand that you're on your fingertips. Even out your sitting bones, so draw the left hip a little bit towards the left. You can stay here or stretch your right arm up to the sky. Take your right knuckles to your low back and see if you can bring your right hand around you towards your left thigh. So the hand that you're on the fingertips could reach up and around and hook onto the opposite thigh. Unwind. Come back up to table. So I'll demonstrate what that looks like just for it to be a little bit more clear. So this hand that was on the fingertips will lift up. And then you bring the knuckles to the low back. So this is one. This gives you the opportunity to either collapse more in the shoulder or pull the shoulder more open. And maybe the hand walks over more and hooks onto the opposite thigh. All right, begin to move into the pose. Does that make sense? Okay. So twisting the other direction. Yeah, right hand threads between left hand, left knee. Draw the shoulders back. Move the hips a little bit to the right. And then maybe reach the left arm up behind your back and try to peel your left shoulder backwards. Yeah. So today we'll be using some of these poses that could make it more likely for you to collapse, but with our skill, we can use these collapsed poses to be more open. Inhale, unwind, then back to table, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Take a few rounds of breath to come into your down dog, maybe bicycling the legs, maybe taking some extra attention to integrating your shoulders. Nav Sender Ta, your shoulders are looking so good. The evolution of a pose is beautiful to witness. All right, look forward to come forward. Bottom of your exhale, bring your feet forward. Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Bend your knees as much as you need to. And then do some backward shoulder circles. Movement in the joint, getting the synovial fluid moving so you can move with more ease. And then keep the shoulders drawing up towards the heart. Take your hands to your thighs and stretch your spine forward. Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, forward fold. One more time, hands on your thighs. Pause here, squeeze your shoulders up to the ceiling. Pull your ribs in while you continue to drag the sit bones back. Bow. From the power of your feet, your hips push through your feet. Inhale, come all the way up and stretch towards the sky. And exhale, hands through heart center. All right, take your hands to your rib cage, kind of gripping it. And then exhale into like your, your common slouching position. So our common pose and tendency show up. So mine is I over arch. So in all of these poses, for me, I would make sure I'm pulling the front ribs in. For some of you, you'll slouch this way. So your counter is to lift up more. So being aware of strengthening the muscles and the tendencies that we want. Inhale, stretch your arms up to the sky. Reach up. Exhale, bow forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen your spine forward, fingertips or hands on your thighs or shins, and then plant your hands, step back, 
plank, top of a push up. For this first one, let's lower the knees to the floor and let's do shoulder push up. So from your hands, or from your shoulders, push through your hands until your back rounds. And then from your hands, suck your shoulders in, keep your elbows straight. So it's plugging and unplugging the shoulders. Then keep the shoulders plugged in. Continue to push through your straight arms and pull your ribs in. Draw the back of your throat up to the ceiling. From here, bend your elbows, chaturanga. Right, lower down to your belly. Strengthen your legs. And inhale, drag yourself forward and curl up, cobra pose. Squeeze your shoulders towards the wall behind you. Look towards your belly button. Notice how that lifts the rib cage up. Keep that and then bring your head forward again and slide it back. Downward facing dog. Okay, inhale, look forward to come forward, bottom of your exhale, step or hop, Uttanasana. Notice the way you're positioning your weight in your feet. Do you have more weight towards your heels or your toes? See if you can make a refinement so the weight is equal into the feet and you're actively pushing down through your heels and through your toes. On your next inhale, draw your spine long and forward. Exhale, bow. Inhale, come all the way up. Stretch up as you stretch up. Adjust the rib cage how you need so you have a more long, neutral spine. And then draw your hands through heart center. All right, take your hands onto your hips. Take the shoulders and point them forward and down. So this is a way that we unconsciously use matter to feel shitty. <laughs> Instead, we'll use matter to feel better. So now lift the shoulders up, draw the arm bones back, and try to puff your heart up. And if you tend to be ribby, pull the ribs in while you do that. All right, now take your hands and see if you can walk your hands so they're interlaced behind your back. When we go for this bind, the tendency tends to be to collapse on the shoulders. So keep this brachial plexus space in front of the pecs and the shoulders open. Uh, now we're going to take both of your hands over to the left. So the fist comes towards the left side of your hips. Yeah, nice. And now the right shoulder is going to be the one that tries to pull forward the most. So lengthen and try to keep pulling your right shoulder back. And then take your right ear towards your right shoulder shoulders back ribs in i like when the hands are behind the rib cage or the arm because you have something you can inflate the back of the kidneys towards draw the chin back through center and take the left ear to the left shoulder All right, chin back through center, lift the head up, switch sides. Uh, notice the shoulder that has a tendency to collapse in and keep it open. Chin to the chest, right ear, right shoulder. And then roll it down and through, left ear, left shoulder. Right, chin back through center, bring your hands back behind your back, lift your head up. So now we'll do unplugging and plugging the head. So I always think about this like the walk like the Egyptian dance, like the head comes forward and back, forward and back. When the head goes forward, the chest drops. When it goes back, the chest lifts. That's a great skill to keep yourself lifted. Bend your knees and then draw your belly to your thighs, drop your head and reach your knuckles towards the ceiling. Maybe you turn your head no or yes. Then release your hands, bow. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to plank. So you can go knees up or knees down, but we're gonna move, we're gonna move through that integration one more time. So from your hands, squeeze the shoulders into the sockets. From your core, push through the hands, ribs lift in, and then the throat continues to do the pull back of the Egyptian. Bend your elbows and lower. 
and then inhale, curl. Ribs in, throat back, drag your spine away from your hips, lengthening the low back. Downward facing dog. From your hands, lift your armpits up so they become more hollow as you integrate your shoulder sockets. Keep the balance of the shoulders. And then as you inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. Put a bend in your right knee and open your hips to the right. Only open as much as you can maintain the left shoulder lifting. Right, step your right foot forward between your hands. Ground your left heel to the floor, second warrior pose. Back hand on your back hip, stretch up and back, reverse warrior. Equal weight through the feet as you stretch up through the spine. Come forward at your hip, bring right elbow to right thigh. Pause here for a moment. Push your right shoulder towards the sliding barn, barn door if you're in the room, if not just towards your left, and then squeeze your right shoulder back. So the right shoulder is integrating into the socket, then spin up to the sky. Stretch your left arm up and over. Throat continues to pull back. Ribs pull back, lengthen. All right, come back up. Second warrior pose. Straighten your right leg. Pivot both of your feet to the left. Interlace your hands behind your back. Lift up through the shoulders. Curl the heart open. Hinge at your hips. Bow forward. Uh, if you feel like you can't hinge at the hips very efficiently, you can bend your knees more. You can stay here. Or sometimes it's nice to bend into one knee at a time, kind of shifting the hips around. Bring the legs both straight. If one is bent, release the hands down. Inhale, straighten the arms, lengthen the spine towards the left side of the room. And then pivot yourself to the front of the yoga mat, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch the left leg up. Open the hips to the left. And then step your left foot forward between your hands, second warrior pose. I'm using the alignment principles today of muscular energy, so drawing in, engaging with matter or whatever is in front of us, so then we have the opportunity to expand. Back hand on your back hip, reverse warrior. Right arm strong, palm turning towards the wall behind you. Come forward and hinge. Elbow on your thigh. Imagine if you could see an x-ray of your spine. What little adjustments could you make so your spine isn't bending or rounding or no longer in a straight-ish line? Maybe throw it back. Come back up, second warrior pose. Straighten the front leg, turn both of the feet towards the right, hinge forward. We're gonna do a threaded needle variation on this side. So the right fingertips will come forward. The left hand will reach between your right hand and your right leg and hold anywhere on your right leg with your left hand. Use your left hand to twist yourself towards the right and use your right shoulder to integrate deeper. If you notice the hips starting to rotate to the right, do a slight rotation of the, excuse me, the hips, feel your hips rotating to the right. Do a little counter twist in your hips, drawing them towards the left. Staying in the pose, breathing deeply, flushing out the organs. On your inhale, unwind. 
and switch sides. Using your right hand to pull yourself towards the right, using your left shoulder to open your heart up more to the sky and keeping the hips balanced by turning the hips slightly towards the right. So you inhale, unwind and lengthen. And then pivot both of your feet towards the front of the room. Plant your hands downward facing dog. As you inhale, come forward towards plank, but not all the way. So the shoulders don't make it over the hands. And we're gonna do a side plank. So pivot your heels towards the left. Balancing on your left hand, left, right hand comes to your hip. A strong left hand, left shoulder curls onto the back. Try to twist your chest more up to the right. This does not need to be how you make it to standing, but you can lift up your right foot and maybe with the help of your right hand or just stepping it forward. So however you wanna get there, we're gonna come into a right foot forward, low lunge. So the left knee is gonna be on the floor. All right, hands on your hips. See if you can make an internal shift, like, oh, a new pose, a new opportunity. How am I going to align with my body today? Maybe that's the use of the props. Push down through the legs. Take your hands out to the side and bend your elbows. Make fists so your biceps and your deltoids engage. And then extend your thumbs and turn your thumbs back and out to the sides of the room. And this should help lift your heart. Like, I'm going that way. Slide your throat back. Stitch your ribs in. Stay here or place your hands behind your back. Keep a bend in your elbows. And then come up to your lunge. Narrow it a little bit so you're not as deep in an Anjani Asana. And we'll do a quad stretch. So you can either imagine yourself doing this with your hands on your hips, or you can reach back left hand to left foot. Use one or both hands on the foot. Make your alignment adjustments that you know. And in this pose that can be challenging, can make you want to close, drop your chest or like wobble, can you create more intentional openness? And get a little bit more out of the left leg if you squeeze your left glute and push through the knee. All right, release the foot. Fingertips come to the floor. Tuck the left toes under and straighten the back leg. We're gonna do the leg position of second warrior pose. So the left heel is gonna spin down to the floor like second warrior. Right knee is gonna remain over the right ankle. And we're going to do like downward facing dog in the upper body. So turning the hips at a four, or the chest at a 45 degree angle from the right leg, either fingertips or hands, down, second warrior pose legs, and then try to stretch through your spine. And continue to widen your right knee over your ankle, draw the inner groins back and apart, and lengthen your spine. All right, walk your hands in a little bit. I prefer a slightly wider triangle pose. So that's what we're gonna be moving into next. We're gonna set up a certain way. So I like to heel toe my back foot back a little bit. Then bring your right hand to the floor or a block and straighten your legs. This can be a little bit easier to get the legs straight and if you set up this way. Then from here, you can decide if you want your right fingertips to be on the inside or the outside, either on the floor or the block as you turn up and stretch. Huh. 
have try stepping your back foot a little bit more that way. Your little tight, tight rope ish. Engage to expand versus check out, which can be easy, somewhat easy when you have a yoga practice and you're like a triangle pose. I'm here. <laughs> options you can stay here or you can take your left hand to your low back and again see if you can wrap your hand around and maybe hold on to your right thigh I normally don't teach stuff like this because it can be really hard to align the shoulder but we're using that challenge as an opportunity to still spin it open really nice for my more bendy rib cage people the hand behind your back also gives you the opportunity to pull the ribs in and puff the back of the kidneys into your arm looking towards in front of your right toes either take your right your left hand to your hip or keep it where it is we're going to shift forward and press up ardha chandrasana yeah huge fan of blocks here Continue to balance on the right leg. Spin your chest to the floor, hip spin to the floor, standing splits. Maybe taking one of your hands to pull yourself closer to your leg. From your feet, imagine sucking the head of the leg bones into the hips and from your hips, powerfully reaching out. Staying here, or plant your hands, come up onto the ball of your right foot, maybe take a few hops up into handstand. And then we're going to meet in seated meditation. Use your breath to center yourself. Use the mudra, your hand position. The uh, internal gaze can be helpful. I always go third eye, eyes closed. And then let your eyes blink open. We'll do it on the second side, coming up to downward facing dog. It's so cool that we have two sides. So if you notice something come up on the other side, like, oh, I kept thinking about my lunch plans. You get the second side to see if you can be a little bit more embodied using the power of this matter, this organism, this land rover that we have to connect you into a deeper aspect of yourself. Come forward towards plank. We're going to move to side plank so the heel shift to the right. Making your way into side plank. Taking an extra moment to think about your right shoulder. The right shoulder pulls away from the chest as you push to the hand as the spin turns up, to, the chest spins up to the left. Maybe lifting your left leg up. The only purpose of these are to have, well, there's lots of purposes, but I suggest having fun, know yourself more, connect to a deeper aspect. It's not the Olympics. Step your left foot forward between your hands. We're going to come into Anjani Asana. Maybe cushioning the knee. Squeezing into the joint as you push down through the feet, opening your arms. I call this life is wonderful pose. It's like it's just raining, like some 
something great. <laughs> but you can make it a little bit more opening in the chest if you engage your arms and from the engagement of your arms, you pull into your shoulders and then spin your thumbs back a little bit more. That will help tip the scapulas to lift the sternum while meeting it with the strength of your core. Now from this position, we're gonna take our hands behind our head and notice if your hands are further forward than C7. So C7 is the bottom of the vertebrae that protrudes the most. See if you can slide your skull back until it's about stacked over C7, make your hands resistance, resistant and continue to push your head back. And then interlace your hands behind your back. Throat back, shoulders back, ribs in if they need to be, push. Pull out, out of that. Such a hard one for me. Reach back with your right hand. Quad stretch. You can look at your shoulders and notice if the shoulder is collapsing onto your chest. So yeah, you can lift it up and scoop it back. All right, release the back foot. Second warrior, two legs. Left knee right over the ankle. It's gonna wanna turn in. Keep broadening your left knee. Then walk your hands at a 45 degree angle, fingertips or palms flat or hands on blocks. Use your hands to pull your rib cage towards your fingertips as you push your butt back and widen the left knee. Pushing into the inner and outer edges of both feet. So the front knee is bent, yeah. Nice. Now center to widen your front knee just a little bit towards Akasha Kirti. Yes. And keep it like that and try to pull your spine towards your fingertips. Now walk your hands in as we prepare for Trikonasana. Maybe widen your stance. Right hand comes to your hips. Push through both of your legs. Legs are straight. And then open yourself up into triangle pose. Um, yeah, there you go. You could imagine you're up against a wall here and you're pushing your butt back to the wall, ribs back to the wall, shoulders back to the wall, back of the skull back to the wall. Yeah. Stay here or wrap your right arm around you to your low back or the front of your left thigh. With a little more attention of continuing to keep the right shoulder spinning open. Look forward, hand, top hand can be wherever you'd like as you press up Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. Uh, giving loving attention to our, the lower leg, trying to avoid letting the left knee twist to the right too much. And then squaring off the hips for standing splits. Fingertips come to the floor or a block. Maybe a hand pulls you in deeper. Yeah, great shoulders lifting up towards the hips. And before we have the option of going into the handstand, remind yourself whatever you choose, like what's the purpose of you working with your matter today? And would handstand serve it? And would handstand serve it if you're just going to beat yourself up if you're not balancing like a gymnast? And then choosing your option and remembering that we'll meet in seated meditation when you're ready. Arms stay straight the whole time. And then come down. Okay.
Allow your eyes to blink open. All right, and we're gonna move into cow face. So the, let's go right knee forward, left leg on top. Uh, and take your right arm up to the sky, left arm up to the sky. Draw your left shoulder into the socket. So extend, draw in, engage the left arm as you spin your left thumb to the back of the room. So this left humerus is doing internal rotation and then bend your elbow so your hand's coming behind your head. Then take your right hand, flip it around to your low back, walk the back of your fingertips up between your shoulder blades. Fingers don't need to touch, but they can. No, I'd rather have you have them not touch. Notice how much this bottom arm wants to do internal rotation, which is reinforcing this physical posture of sadness, which has been like scientifically proven. So can you use the muscles of your right arm and try to spin external rotation so you're spinning your inner armpit towards the right side of the room? If your ribs pop out, pull the back of the ribs towards the hand, and then you also have this thing other known, otherwise known as your forearm behind your head that you can slide your skull back into. All right, release your arms. Maybe take the wave. I've been trying to teach my kids stuff. We all hold hands. We can like, that hasn't been successful yet. But it's, a, it's a new goal we're, we're working towards. Switch sides. My right arm up, arm is engaged. When the arm is engaged, you'll get more, more bigger movement in the structure of the bones, spinning the right hand to the back of the room. Other arm, yeah, then bend your elbow, yep. Did you? Okay, then yeah, do it to you. And then maybe the, or then the second hand comes under. So the upper arm spins in towards the ear and the bottom arm spins out towards the side of the room. Align the spine. And close your eyes, turn your gaze towards the center. You have the center energy channel that runs up and down your spine, known as the Shashunna. This is where like spirit lives the most. And you imagine this center channel getting your ability to perceive it getting bigger. And it's getting bigger not because you're denouncing or pushing away matter in the world, but because you engage in it. You release the arms. <laughs> okay, let's do... Um, Kneeling, right foot forward. I'm a big fan of blanket here. And then spin. So, right foot. <laughs> it's probably confusing because I'm just like interchangeably what one's right or left. I feel like now I'm finally getting it. Last Thursday, I, Tuesday, I really thought I figured it out. And then at the end of class, I realized I was wrong the whole time. Your right foot forward, hands on your hips. This is like second warrior pose, right? So we'll do a little dancing warrior here. Hands on, stretch out. So um, spin your left foot towards the right. There you go. And then walk your front foot a little bit more forward. There you go. And so your hip should be facing the left. Take your left hand on your hip, reverse warrior. Integrate your shoulders, try to pull your spine out of your hips as you root your hips towards your feet. And then come forward, elbow to the thigh, stretch the top arm up and over. Right shoulder squeezes on the back, spin your arm, your chest up to the ceiling, and then come back up. Release your hands down, look forward. So option, you can do Parsva Konasana here, so you can go elbows or you can go fingertips, or you can work for the bind where you take your 
right arm elbow under, reach your right hand to your low back, stretch your left arm around. Hands don't need to clasp wherever you end up, so work on peeling the shoulders away from each other and opening the heart up. Skull back. Release the bind if you have it. Come back up. Second warrior pose. Stretch the arms wide. Awesome. And switch sides. Come to your knees. I'm going to spin around this way. <laughs> However you want to get there. The back hip's going to open towards the right. Left knee over your ankle, open your arms wide. Back hand on your hip, reverse. Come forward, elbow to your thigh. And then staying here, going for fingertips to the floor, or wrapping your hands around towards your low back. Find me inner arm spinning towards in front and back of the room, chest spins open. Working with what we've got, which in this case is this challenging pose to be more open and centered. All right, come back up, stretch your arms wide. Ooh. Really nice, hand release. Let's come to sit down on the floor or a cushion. We'll go right knee forward, left foot crosses over right knee. Uh, getting the sit bones evenly rooted, left big toe grounded, hold the knee, stretch your chest up, and imagine that line, so like it's if someone sawed from like the top of our head, they'd want it to like go straight down to the tailbone, Put the ribs in, shoulders back, throat back, and from this more aligned space, try to levitate the collarbones and the skull upward. And then with this illuminated lift, rotate your spine towards the left. Right fingertips on the floor behind you. Nope, left fingertips on the floor behind you. Squeeze your knee in. You can imagine your back was up to a wall here too. So the skull pulls back, shoulders pull back, ribs pull back if they need to or heart lifts and sit bones back. I'm trying to breathe as deeply as you can, getting a lot of movement into your belly. It's a way of taking care of this organism that can live long and happy and healthy. On your next inhale, unwind. Turn your chest towards the right, fingertips on the floor, and like do a little bow. Come back up through center. Take your left foot to the center so it's not in front of the right knee. I like to widen my right knee. Turn to the right, right hand plants on the floor, fingertips face towards the back of the room. You can stay here and pull, plug the right shoulder on your back. Left hand on your knee and spin your chest to the left, or you can lift your hips up for a version of wild thing. All right, so when you're ready, sit back down, switch your legs.
where your attention goes, energy flows. Notice what you're putting, putting your intention on. Attention. And then spin your chest towards the right. Right fingertips come behind the back. Hug or elbow the right knee. As you inhale, unwind, turn to the left, do a little bow. My pelvis lifts up a little bit as I do this. And come back upright. Right foot widens, left knee widens, left hand plants behind the back, fingertips face away from you. Maybe hips lift or take a subtle pec stretch. Really nice. And stay up in seated meditation or lay down on your back for Shavasana. And choose the posture that will help you the most for the rest of the day. And systematically relax the body from the toes up to the crown of the head. But these teachings, these poses can deeper integrate into who you are.
allow yourself to deepen into your relaxation a little bit more for these last few moments. If you're on your back, begin to bring yourself up to a seated meditation as you're ready. And we'll end with a few minutes of pranayama. We'll start with long, deep breathing. So as you inhale, breathing down into your low belly, your chest, your collarbones, your brain. And as you exhale, breathing out in the reverse. Collarbones drop, ribs draw in, belly draws in and up. If you're filling your container with energy and keeping the length as you exhale and drain the breath. Breathing in new energy, releasing spent energy. From here, we'll move into Nadi Shodhana. So taking your right hand, your two-piece fingers, unless you do a different mudra, you can. And on you, sorry, we take the two-piece fingers down into the pad. The right thumb blocks off the right nostril as you inhale through the left nostril. So spend the breath at the top. Use your ring and pinky to close off your left nostril and exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. After the inhale, close off the right nostril and exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. And switch exhaling through the right. So you'll switch after every inhale. Keep your spine long. Continue to fill your body from the top at the bottom to the top and exhaling. The next time you inhale through your left nostril, release your hands to spend your breath. And then when you are ready, exhale through both nostrils and sit in meditation.
and draw your hands in front of your heart. I like to think of the organism that we all are as like a land rover. It's like the suit we have to operate on the land. And how can we care for this land rover in a way that it's enjoyable and we can also be productive and useful with it. Not abusing it, trashing it, trans trashing the land. Right? Let's end with one ohm. Take a full breath in and out. And now we'll chant in. Oh. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful week. Namaste.